Today at shopdat.com, we're gonna be showing you how to change the oil on a supercharged three liter S4. Okay, so before we get into specifics of changing oil on this car, uh, the S4 from the factory does not actually have a dipstick from the factory. So you have the ability to upgrade and add one to the vehicle. There is a one that we have, which we will link in the description below, which we're gonna show you how to install later on, but that is something that is on not from the factory on this vehicle. So we're gonna get inside the vehicle and show you the oil level checking procedure. So as we go into our vehicle, when we go into service and checks, you can see your oil level is right here where you can locate that and you can see max min. And now this is how the, the from the factory, you're supposed to be checking oil. Now, again, a lot of enthusiasts don't like this method because you have to trust the sensor and you don't have the ability to physically check it. And so they often will add a dipstick in that circumstance. Uh, but you will always wanna check your oil level before you change oil to ensure that it, it maybe you have a good level beforehand and that you know when you fill it, if you do, let's say have a leak or something of that nature, you'll know because if your system is low, you're either burning oil or you have a leak. So you're always gonna wanna check that. Okay, to start with our oil change, we're going to start by removing our oil cap. And what I like to do is put it kind of in this hood area or even maybe somewhere on top of the engine where you know you'll definitely see it. This will ensure that you definitely do not close the hood and, and start the car without the oil cap in there or more specifically without putting oil into the engine, which is why I leave that off like that. And then we're gonna take, we have our 36 millimeter and this is our oil filter housing back here. And what I'm gonna do is just loosen this up as much as possible to where it'll allow air in there. And then we're gonna let it kind of just hang out there. And that way, when we drain our oil out, the bottom, out of the bottom, this housing shouldn't have any oil left inside of there except for some residual, which will keep down the mess that you get from that particular oil filter when you do flip it over to swap it out. Now we gotta remove our belly pan from our vehicle, which we're gonna remove. There's a bunch of these half turn type screws that we can remove from here. And some of these are captive, which means they stay with it, which would be these rear ones. And then these other ones are actually gonna come out uh, as we remove them. And these are generally fairly expensive hardware. We'll link to them in the description, uh, but they often get lost by oil change places. So you do wanna make sure that when you are working with these that you do try to keep track of all these things because if you lose them, the, it can get a little pricey. And we can take that down. And then we have our six millimeter drain plug right here, which we're gonna remove. So we are going to get our oil drain bucket Okay, so we have our oil drain bucket under here and we have our six millimeter Allen. And all we're gonna do is crack that loose and it's already starting to come out a little bit there. Now, whenever you're draining oil, what I always like to do is just kind of put your finger under there and look at the oil. You can look in the consistency of the oil. You can also smell it to make sure that maybe it's not over soaked with fuel or any other things like that. You can gauge an idea of the condition of the engine oil to determine if there's something wrong. Now. Obviously it gets to be hard if you're, if you're not super experienced with changing the oil on vehicles that, of what it's supposed to be like, but uh, over time it could be something that you recognize what normal looks like. That way, when you have something that isn't normal, you can know exactly what's going on. So I'm gonna stick this six millimeter up in here and get this plug out all the way, at which point we should lose a lot of oil. And this is pretty hot, this engine when we started. Uh, which is why it's pretty vis pretty thin. Now that we've gotten to basically where it's completely done dripping, you can wait till it's done dripping completely. It's never really gonna drip completely out all the way. So we are just gonna get this threaded in. Now, one thing I wanna mention is you will wanna make sure that when you do thread this back in, there's a, there's a washer on here that you wanna make sure the old washer came out with the old drain plug. 
Now I can tell you as somebody who's changed my oil on my share of cars, this is actually kind of, it's extremely easy uh, oil change, but it's kind of messy because the amount of fluid that comes out of this is actually quite a bit and the way it comes out kind of tends to splatter a little bit. So you will want to be careful of that. Uh, also going in and out with this drain plug, it already starts to, to release oil way before you're even all the way out, which a lot of vehicles won't kind of basically until you're at the end and pull the drain plug out of the way, which is why this one probably is a little more messy than other cars. Otherwise, it's actually a super easy uh, oil change. And we're going to torque this guy down and we'll give you that torque spec uh, for this drain plug here. You will wanna be sure that you're careful whenever you're dealing with these drain plugs because uh, you could strip this and then you have to replace your oil pan, which you would regret. Now this one, what I would recommend while you have your vehicle up in the air, obviously we have it on lift. You're probably not gonna have it on lift, but you have it on jack stands. I would look over the vehicle just to make sure everything is in order. Anybody who is going to be changing your oil at a dealership or something, a shop of that nature, like our shop or any other specialist type shop, they're going to be looking over your vehicle, making sure that everything is operational and making sure everything's working properly. Uh, we do have a video that actually shows you the inspection on this vehicle, that kind of going over how to check over a vehicle. Uh, it's a pretty broad overview, but I think it's a pretty good video, which we will link to in the description below where you can check out that. Now we're gonna get our belly pan back in place and then we'll drop our vehicle down. Now we're ready to put our belly pan back up. Now before we do, we have all of our screws in our magnetic bolt tray, which we're just gonna throw underneath here, this steel here, and then we can throw this up. And what I would do is just slide this in place on the front side here. And then get the back one in the center up and that will make your life a lot easier. You will have to kind of look from the back here, looking up to make sure you got it lined up and then you can just get it in place like so. It's probably worth double checking before you have them all the way in there that everything is seated where it's supposed to be before you get any too many of them tightened in place. We're all good. So we are going to take our screws and throw them all in. Okay, so now we're up top, we're gonna to be replacing our filter. Uh, our kit with this filter comes with a filter and then the, the gaskets for the filter housing. And so we're gonna put, the, we have this right here just so we can show you uh, what this is gonna look like as up close and personal as possible. And so we have our filter housing here. And so what we're gonna do is pop this off. And then inside here, or where your gaskets are. So we're gonna replace that gasket. And what I recommend is either a pair of needle nose pliers or a pick where you can kind of dig it in there and pop this seal out. Now, picks like this are always pretty invaluable to have. Uh, we do have pick sets available if you need them, which we will link to, but we just pop this guy back in it's often good to coat a little bit of oil around it and make sure that you're all set with that. Okay, so we have our filter and then we have our housing here and we have our seal already in there. And we just pop that in there like so. And then we have our last seal here, which we're gonna look at our housing to take a look at how to replace that. Okay, so our last seal here, we're at the oil filter housing. This is where the oil filter would go. And what we're gonna do is take this seal, it's located right here at the edge and we're just gonna grab our pick and just slide that off. And we can just discard that. What I recommend is take a little bit of oil from that filter housing, run it around there. And then we can just pop this guy back on and just make sure it sits in that channel real well. And then we can throw our filter back in. All right, we're gonna throw our filter housing back in place here. Thread that down and the torque specs are actually located right on the back of our filter housing here. Again, 36 millimeter. And then we'll torque that down. All right, so now it's time to fill our oil and 
We're going to be using our funnel here. This is a funnel that we have that actually locks into the oil filter housing. This is super sturdy here. You could see if you take a one liter, you could just dump it in there and it would hold it up no problem. For a five liter, we are gonna have to hold it, but we don't have to worry about a mess. Now, let's talk a little bit about oil. So, we are gonna be using uh, this Motul 8100XS 5W40. Uh, the main key with this engine, or really most Volkswagen Audi engines, is that, is that you're finding oil that meets the spec required. Obviously, we'd love for if you purchase it from us, but if not, the important part is making sure that you meet something that meets the 50200 spec for this engine and uh, for any associated other engines. Again, similar spec, basically all VW and Audi engines with the exceptions of diesels and then some of the more current stuff, 50200 is generally the spec. Now, what I'm going to do is just dump this in and I'm just going to let this all roll in there all five liters. I'm gonna put in six and then we'll check the oil level. Now, once we put in our six, what I'm gonna do is unlock this guy. Make sure you don't drip any oil. And then I'm gonna throw this back in place. It's oil cap. And then we're gonna start this engine up because when you check this oil, you need to make sure that the, the oil is run through everything, including the filter housing. Now, in terms of checking your oil, you can see here that so there's this plug right here. Now this is where your dipstick could go if you had one. Again, we will link to this one in the description below. And so you can just stick it down in there and this will allow us to check our oil. And it looks like we're gonna need a little more. So let's fill this thing up. Okay, so we put our full seven liters of oil in there. We checked it and we are at a good level. And we can now throw our cap back on. Thank you so much for watching our video on how to change the oil on our B8.5 S4. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.